Hey everybody, my name is Ryan and welcome to another update video after a very, very long time. So, a lot of changes have happened since then and a big one is I updated to Unity 5. Um, apart from a few scripts, the transition was pretty, pretty easy. And I got all the awesome graphical updates that it comes with. Um, the three main things graphically I think are the global illumination, that's like the light bouncing off the different colors. So you can see the orange um, bounces off onto the gray here. Um, the real-time lighting and the physical based rendering. And there's tons of tutorials and documentation all over the internet for that. Um, so I'm not going to explain it here. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, so that's that. Uh, what I am going to talk about today is um, the, UI, the new UI system, relatively new, and how I use it to make a main menu and also redo the HUD for the player. Uh, so, and important, um, answer a few questions that you guys had. And the first question was about aiming up and down. I got that a lot, like how to do it without the pro version of Unity, without using IK and stuff. And I'll show you that. So I use Mechanim for that. Um, here's my player controller on the bottom left here. Um, there's a base layer which is the locomotion like always. Uh, layer 2 which is the gun shooting, reloading, firing, that type of thing. And then a new layer in between that's on override and uses the upper body only mask. Um, that's how I did it. So I made three different animations called aim down, aim forward, and aim up. These animations are only one frame long because they don't have to be moving. And um, there's a 1D directional um, blending. So how it works is if this value called aim height equals zero, then the aim down animation will play. And if it's going to 1, then it'll fade up into the aim up. And then, of course, aim forward is in between. So that's quite simple. You can see the character looking up and down in the bottom right preview window. So in script, all we have to do is change this aim height float between 0 and 1, and your character will be able to aim up and down. So in scripting, I'll show you that. Um, not here, not here, right here, okay. So I just marked it red so it's easier to see, so I can find it. Um, so this line, there's a variable called rotation y, and that's going to be the a y axis, axis of the mouse or the joystick, multiplied by the sensitivity, time dot delta time to make sure it relies on time and then sensitivity again. Um, so this takes the value, this line clamps that value to make sure it's not too high, make sure you're not aiming too high or too low, that type of thing. And then this is setting the animation parameter um, to the rotation Y. And that's simply defined here under parameters, I have the aim height parameter. And then, of course, up here, that's what's controlling the blending. So I'll show you that in the game. Ignore the main menu, because I'll be talking that later. Um, so you can see my character's here. When I push the mouse or the joystick up, you aim upwards or you aim downwards. Quite simple. Feels pretty smooth. Um, actually, feels really responsive. I was surprised. So now we have aiming up and down. Um, if I wanted to aim up higher, I would have to tweak the animation so the player actually aims higher. So um, you control how high they actually aim via the animation. So what's next? What's next? Oh, I guess I should talk about the other critique or animate or question I had, which was about not being able to see the HUD when you zoom in and saying how you can't tell when you're actually being hit and um, with this project this summer I set up many deadlines for what features I want to add 
so it's going to help me um, get through it quicker, um, also motivate me. And one of those is to add a visual representation like blood or an audio representation whenever the players hit so they know. Because I kind of want that tunnel vision when they're aiming to be part of the gameplay. And I'm sure you guys noticed that I redid the HUD with the new UI on the back back and on the gun. So now it's attached to the gun, the magazines and the rounds. I think it's a little bit cooler that way, you know. And my backpack is just the same with the health and the name. So now that we got the questions out of the way, I can start talking about um, the UI. So first I'll talk about the main menu itself. Uh, the main menu is just a camera that will be turned on whenever the main menu is active. And um, the m main menu here on the side. And the two input. So player 1 and player 2 can input what their name is and what color they want to be. So I think it's easiest just to show you it in action. So the menu will fade in. You can choose single player, multiplayer. Options currently don't work. And exit doesn't work when you're in this type of mode. So if I click on single player, then the first player will be able to input all the things they want for their character. Like my name is Ryan. Um, I think my favorite color out here is yellow. And whether or not I'm ready to play. And if you want split screen two players, all you have to do is simply click on multiplayer and the second menu fades in. So stay, I'm by myself right now, but say Steven wants to play with me. I don't know who Steven is, but I think he likes the color red. Um, so you can click on ready when he's done. And I can click on ready for player one when player one is done. So as you can see, it um, spawned two characters right away made it split screen and you can see each player has their name and each player has the color that they chose as their crosshair and um, on their backpack and ammo display and stuff so um, be able to do this um, easily I had to completely redo the infrastructure of how the players spawn and um, how to give them parameters and that's a topic for another video because it's a little bit complicated and now I just want to talk about the actual UI itself. Uh, so you can see it works. Split screen works. I have the, um, the second player and the first player can be controlled from two different controllers as well. And the first player can also be controlled by the mouse and such. So now that you saw how the main menu works, I can start talking about it. So here, I need to minimize this. Alright, so the main menu canvas has a animator attached to it, and I'm going to give you guys a link to what I think is the best um, tutorial for the new UI system. And I think a lot of people missed it, is because it was during 4.6 when the UI was in like beta mode or something, so a lot of people weren't aware that the new UI was a thing. And it's the best video and for tutorial I think that I found, so I'll put that in the description. It goes very in depth and like always I'm just going to give an overview here um, in these update videos. So we have the animator that has three different layers. Um, the base layer is for the actual main menu and then layer two and three are for player one and player two um, their panels where they put in their input. So the base layer on start just simply fades in it's quite self-explanatory. Um, you just make this animation by controlling the alpha value in the canvas group. And then player 1 and player 2, um, their animations are extremely similar. They're exact same. They look exactly the same except one's for player 2 and player 1's player 1. So the default state is that side menu is invisible then it'll fade in and fade out depending on what the player clicks on. So how this UI system basically works that's easiest is you have buttons and you create an event for that button 
and then you refer to a script and a function within that script and then by click on the buttons and calling the different functions that's how you change things in your game so um, for example uh, a good example is this green button here that is clicked on it will run the void um, player one select color and gives it a value of one and if I click on cyan it'll give it a value of two red value of three and yellow value of four and by changing that value um, it'll move this black uh, square um, beneath that color to let the player know that's actually what they're selecting and um, the toggle is a little bit complicated I do some fiddling with that but I'll try to show you guys everything in the script so you guys have a good idea of how to do these tricky things um, so the most important thing to know is whenever you're editing the UI in code you should have this um, using unity engine UI um, in the beginning in the very top or else the syntax isn't gonna work um, okay so what should I talk about first So actually what I'm going to explain to you guys first is the game manager script and what it does is it communicates with the other scripts in the game and has a lot of static variables within it to kind of um, manage the entire game and the whole big picture of what it's doing. So one of the important things it does is it open and closes the main menu. So if you call this function and tell the main menu to open, then it will unlock the cursor and make it visible so you can use the cursor on the main menu and it'll also destroy any of the players and if you want to close the main menu then it'll close it while turning off the cursor so you don't see it in game um, another important function is it has the spawn player function so you can either spawn one or two players um, without going into the infrastructure um, I think the next vi video will be about split screen and how I accomplished it. I'm not sure how in depth it will be. If you guys really want an in depth split screen tutorial, um, making sure you control the camera right and being able um, to make it so only one controller controls one player and the other controller controls the other, then let me know in the comments. Um, but for now, all you need to know is. Um, the spawn player will spawn a prefab and then it'll give it what color it's supposed to be. Actually, it'll tell it what player number it's supposed to be and that script will control the things like color, um, what input of the controller they're looking for, if they're looking for a controller 1 or 2 and such. And if the player number is 2, then it's going to spawn both players and let each prefab know, hey, you're, you're player 1 and the other one's player 2 so that script can interpret it how it needs to um, so that's pretty much all the game manager does and now I'll talk about the main menu so I think I already said this important thing is make sure unity engine dot UI is in it and let's see what's going on so static variables um, a string saying what the players names are and what color um, they want to be um, this is just for the logic if player one is ready um, and it's single player then go right ahead but if it's not single player if it's multiplayer then both player one and player two have to be ready um, these are just um, public uh, references to uh, what's it called um, the different green and color buttons and then also the black image that lets you know which one you're selecting and that's duplicated for both player 2 and player 1. So one important thing is how do you change the player's name in game by taking what the player types in in the input field. So I'll show you guys how to do that because that's something I actually didn't find online that easily. 
Um, so I'll click on this input field and go down to, well actually just the input field. And I made this function called update text box. And I'll show you that in script. Update the text box. And it wants the parameter, it wants a text. And then what it does, it'll make player one's name that text. Which is, this is a lot of, it's kind of confusing, but I'll just show you. Um, so once you make it want to have a parameter of text, then you could drag and drop the new text that the player is going to write, and that'll be underneath it when you create the input field in the first place. So you just um, drag and drop this in there, and then it should work fine. And same thing for player two, just has a different function name. Um, this has to do with the logic of if player one is ready, like start, or if both players are ready, start, and such. And that's kind of self-explanatory. Um, this is this is a function that's going to be called when you click on the single player button. And what that does, it'll fade in the single player, and it'll fade out the um, the second player. Do do do. Um, so this is the the color thing I was telling you guys about. So if you click on green, then the color is going to equal one. So it sets the black um, selector image to the green position. So it shows the player what they're selecting currently. And um, this is just more of the logic, um, making sure to only start the game when both players are ready or if one's ready and they're playing single player and such. So I think that's pretty much all I want to talk about. So while I'm shooting this ragdoll, I'm going to talk about what's coming up next in this game um, and pretty much just what are my deadlines coming up. So I'm taking a look. Um, so I'm going to incorporate these ragdolls so when the player dies they also ragdoll and you can see that you can input a force based on the bullet. Same thing with the gun. Um, I'm going to make a 1v1 objective, like a versus objective, and then a co-op ob objective against um, artificial intelligence. And I actually started working on that. There's going to be drone characters that fly around and shoot you. Um, so that'll be not the next update, but uh, probably the update after that. And so those are a few things to uh, look forward to. So if you want to see that, want to watch my progress on this game, then feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.